Just thinking again about this phrase that Walter Benjamin talks about, where he says something like, uh, where he talks about language in general and language in particular. Because, yeah, I mean, the particular aspect of it which interests me right now, which is kind of combining with some other stuff I've been thinking about, is uh, is the fact that in terms of when he's talking about human language, human language in particular, there's only one language. That's the point. There's all, there is only human language. And I know some people say that dolphins can talk and that uh, you know apes can talk and there's computer languages and so and, and so forth. But there isn't, in the technical sense, at least in the sense that Walter Benjamin means. And, and I think in in um, in a kind of broader technical sense, that isn't really the case. There's there's all kinds of expressive modalities and expressive systems, you know. And, and, and yeah, sure, dolphins and lots of other animals can express themselves in certain ways. But that's that's different to the technical. Uh, structures of language and there's, there is only really human language and there's lots of variants in that course there's lots of different dialects and different um, yeah different, different variations in that but there is essentially only the language of humans so I'm just thinking what does it mean to say language in general when there is only one language you know what I mean it's like because you say language in general it's, it seems as if you're implying a category of things called languages, even if there's only one of them. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I guess in a sense that always happens. You know, when you, when you, even if there's only one of something, when you name it and identify it, you, you, you're kind of putting it into a category which contains itself. Even if that even if that category has only got that that, that uh, single entity inside it, like languages in, in general and language in particular, human language in particular, but the fact there is only human language, nevertheless sets up this category of languages, um, of which human language is the only occupant. Uh, yeah, it's funny that. You know, okay, so let me just see if I can think this through. So. Identifying something, even though it's singular, simultaneously creates the category which contains it. Okay, there's something in there about number for me. <clears throat> I've been thinking a bit about maths recently. And I did some thinking about maths a couple of years ago about zeros and ones. But um, it seems to me that like, what that implies in terms of maths and number is that as soon as you get the idea of of oneness, as soon as you get the idea of one, as opposed to zero, as opposed to nothing, the idea of one creates the category, simultaneously creates the category of number, which contains one, it only really contains one, but once you've got the idea of the category that contains only a single entity, the possibility arises for um, for other occupants. So all the, it's the, So following that kind of logic, all the other numbers, at least, seem to be implied by the existence of this category of number that uh, the identification of a single number one creates. I don't know if that's valid or not, but that's, that seems to be the logic of that. That the big, the, big, um, uh, the big step is going from zero to one. And once you've got one, you've got the category of number and all other numbers fall out of that in, in, in principle, I think. Yeah, perhaps the other connection into this is um, yeah, because I've been thinking about theism and, and gods and stuff recently. Is this this thing to do with monotheistic religions? I don't know which came first, monotheistic religions or polytheistic religions or pantheism or something. I don't know, but <clears throat> I think once you got the idea of a single god, that, that, I think that does something funny with category, because once you got the idea of a single god, it simultaneously creates the category that it is the single occupant of, in the same way that human language is the only occupant of the category of language. Um, God is the only occupant of the category of God in, in monotheistic religions. But, because, but, but of course it implies the possible existence of other gods by the fact that there is a category that it exists within. And I think to both to escape that possibility, to escape the inevitability of a single god implying the existence of other gods inherently within its categorization system, and also to get around the problem of there, if there is a category, then there's something larger than God. 
what you would have to do is you would have to make the transformation so that God is simultaneously the, uh, the occupant of the category and the category itself. So you'd have to get into that kind of logical puzzle where God becomes the, uh, well, I think I can't remember the phrase exactly, the set of all sets that contains itself, something like that. Um, it's that kind of logical um, Mobius stripped kind of loop where the where the occupant of the category is is uh, reflexively referred to within the definition of the category. All right, which um, yeah, I mean, deeply unsatisfying, but you know, it's I think there's something there's something in there about that. Yeah, anyway, I don't know if that makes any sense. That's what I'm thinking of right now.